to witness an Emmys, period, both in person and around the world. That, of course, was former White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer making cameo during one of the more memorable moments of the 69th Primetime Emmy Awards. But not everybody was laughing. Some criticized that moment as normalizing and making light of a White House press office that has repeatedly been caught lying and exaggerating. I want to bring my panel back for a reaction to this. I want to start with you, Congresswoman. We all sort of laughed about it. And when I watched it, I laughed about it, too, coming up in the podium, Melissa McCarthy style. But there is an argument to be made. Sean Spicer did get up there and lie. He lied about crowd size the day after the president was inaugurated. All three of us are parents. Yeah. We know, we teach our kids lying not acceptable. What's your take on this? Well, I thought it was funny and was smart of him to do it. You gotta be able to joke about things, but part of it is we joke, but joke about, about what? That he got up there and lied over and over? This, this is the White House. The dysfunction. I'm very concerned about it because frankly we need agreed upon facts. You know, Tom and I were talking during the break about climate change, we were talking about negotiations on trade, and we need a set of facts we agree on. And that is one of the most concerning things that we see coming out of the White House is questioning of what are baseline facts. And I think none of us know how to handle it. I know folks in the media are having trouble handling it, and I think we have to be consistent. I try to just put facts out there as much as I can, links to trusted sites or whatever, but it is hard. And you've got kids, I've got kids, mine are grown, and they are furious about it. I don't know what I'd do if I had school-age kids right now, because it's hard. You want to respect the office, but you know we're taught certain things. Hyperbole is one thing, and like not telling what is true is something else and it is concerning but we got a lot of work to do and that's the problem okay We're trying to get work done and it's a distraction from getting work done that congress needs to do and the country needs us to do you are working together and you were both at the white house recently talk to us about this idea this notion that the president is pivoting cutting deals with nancy pelosi and chuck how real is this? Because I've got a fear that, listen, the president turns and twists all the time, and this could just be a, a September romance. Well, Stephanie, as you know, and we've talked about this before, I, I do believe uh, the president recognizes that he wants to govern. He wants to get things done. In order to do that, it is, in my humble opinion, it is going to take working across the aisle with sincere, good faith uh, legislators who want to govern for the American people. Okay, this, sincere, good faith legislators. Do you know all the words he's called Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi? I understand that. And uh, that's fair criticism, and I understand the words. But we're, I'm a New Yorker. He's a New Yorker. You, I, you know what? Nope. I'm, here's the thing. Like I'm that. not going to give you that. Okay. I'm a New Yorker, too. Mm -hmm. I don't call, I'm, and, and I'm a respectful adult. And I don't call people sick, pathetic losers. And I sure hope that my president wouldn't. So let's not put that on being a New I Yorker. I appreciate that. But at the end of the day, he is our president, our president. Yes. And what we need to do is make sure that we're working together and, and cut the rhetoric out, I think he is committed to governing, getting things done for the American people. I've seen that a long time ago and I saw it on display again in the White House firsthand. And now is the opportunity, the opportunity for governing members to rise. This is the, the moment to seize. Before we go, how hard is it for you to work with Republicans? Does the left, the extreme left of your own party, do they make it hard for you? Not all of them support it, but I'm fortunate in my district, which is kind of a Missouri show me type district in Connecticut, where most of the voters aren't registered in either party, almost 50% not registered in either party. They want me to get stuff done. The very first Democratic bill signed by this president was mine. You know, I will stand up and I will denounce stuff I don't like. I don't like the name calling. It's not helpful. But we have so much work to do. I don't know if this is a September romance. I hope it can persist because, frankly, the country is eager for us to get things done. I think he doesn't care about ideology. That's an opening for pragmatic people like me and Tom, and we're going to try to seize it. That's what we want, bipartisanship.